for Log Home. This presentation is an abbreviated version of our promotional DVD, which you can obtain by speaking to one of our representatives. Kootenai uses a slow-growing species of pine known as lodgepole pine. These logs that we use are strictly beetle kill, which means a species of beetle bores under the bark and lives there burrowing tunnels. This kills the tree and the beetle leaves. The tree will then typically stand four to six years before being harvested. During this time, any larva that was in the tree hatches and leaves and the tree thoroughly dries with minimal twisting and cracking. Therefore, it dries naturally, which is the best way, and has no rot at the same time. We buy the logs direct from a local Colorado logger and handcraft authentic old-fashioned log homes from these. Please take a minute to see how we do this and feel free to ask any questions that you may have. Now we will go to our manufacturing site here in Austin, Colorado. We'll take a brief look at how our sawsmiths craft these homes one log at a time. Firstly, they arrive on a log truck much like this. These are raw logs straight from the forest. Next they are cut to an optimum length and placed on the bandsaw for their flat sides. We'll take a look as Jamie does just this to a log. Next, it is slid over to Shano, our peeler. Shano peels a lot of logs. Notice this is the only step that affects the appearance of the log. Once it is peeled, it is still very distinctly the same log that it was. Only now, the beauty of it is exposed. Now we will move over to the pad where the actual log crafting takes place. Here we will watch Charles notch a corner as well as a splice. This is a house that has already been laid out on our pad and is up about three or four courses of logs. We are going to speed this up about two and a half times which we will do so more throughout this presentation. Again if you are interested in this and would like to see more you can see this same footage on the full DVD played at actual speed. Watch carefully to the attention to detail as this corner is made. And there is a perfectly fitted corner. To see an actual corner model, and for further explanation of the features of this corner, just ask a representative here and they will be happy to speak with you. Now we will take a brief look as Charles does a splice notch, which is used in a wall where there is a butt joint. This will have the same virtues as the corner notch does.
As the house progresses from just a few courses like this to a few courses over the doors and windows to the top of the first story with all the beams and so on in it, it is ready for the floor joist. Here's a view of what they will look like when they are in your home. We will next take a look at the process involved in getting them there. Here we will watch as Charles puts the tenon on the end of a joist. Now we will watch as Kevin crafts a mortise in the wall for the joist. And here we have a floor joist that will stand for generations to come. Once the top of the first story has been reached, the top layer of logs are taken off and placed on the pad. From there, the second story is laid just as the first. Now we'll take a look at the procedure for creating a gable. Firstly, they are laid up with the logs being successively shorter till the peak is reached. Then they are cut off as we see Kevin doing here. Now that we have reached the peak of the building, the next major step is the ridge pole. Here Charles, with the assistance of Pete, is marking it for its first cut.
The opposite end of the ridge pole has received a treatment much similar to the tenon on a floor joist. Now that the ridge pole has been cut, the gable now is mortised to receive it. Now they are ready to set the ridge. Now that the gables are up and the ridge pole is set, the next most common component is the purlins. Here Kevin marks and cuts one.
Now the gable is notched to receive the purlin. And here is the moment of truth when the purlin slides into place. Here to a purlin, providing log cosmetics on the interior while being completely functional and very substantial. Now that the main log structure is up, we will take a look at some of the detail that goes into the takedown. Here we are marking a ledge. A ledge, as we call it, is created when the flat of a log above is narrower than the flat of the log below. The log is then peeled to this line so as not to create a ledge for water to collect. This also creates a cleaner look which is why we also mark and peel our splices. After the log is taken down, Shano peels the ledges as we see here. So whether your log home is a cozy little winter retreat like this, or a three-story lodge like this, the same old-fashioned principles go into each one. The same handcrafted technique and the same attention to detail. The same authentic rustic log theme can be found in each one. Count on Kootenai Log Homes for the old-fashioned, hard-working approach to building log structures, as well as great flexibility with your plans. We would be glad to help you get your dream onto plans. We can build it no matter what the size. Thank you for watching this presentation and if you have any further questions, please feel free to ask a representative and they will be happy to speak with you.